Hey everyone, thanks for coming back. The news cycles have been busier lately with public presentations and updates and audit reports. So I'm splitting these videos up for a little bit more frequent publication. NASA leadership in the Exploration Systems Mission Directorate, ESDMD for short, made public presentations to the NASA Advisory Council Human Exploration and Operations Committee on Friday, April 26th. Catherine Kerner, the Associate Administrator of ESDMD, and Amit Chatria, Deputy Associate Administrator of the Moon to Mars Program Office under ESDMD, made presentations that provided updates on the Artemis program's work and the status of planning and preparations for the next Artemis missions. Continuing the reporting from the previous video, in this one, let's focus on imagery from the presentation slides and from events last week that graphically provide part of the update. The presentations included a few new and or previously unseen images. Specific to Artemis II, we got a shot of the Artemis II SLS second stage, the Interim Cryogenic Propulsion Stage, or ICPS, in presumably the storage cell at United Launch Alliance's Delta Operations Center. You can see the nozzle extension and deployment hardware for the version of the RL-10 that flies on ICPS and used to fly with the now retired Delta IV launch vehicle that is now installed. The ULA Common Avionics Suite is also installed on the stage in the dock and checked out there. There was also a new shot in the presentation of the Orion stage adapter for Artemis II. Thanks to NASA Public Affairs, they provided a higher resolution copy of the image because the interesting addition is the centerline docking target installed in the middle of the diaphragm. This docking target will be used during Artemis II by the flight crew as a physical reference as they manually perform a proximity operations demonstration. The demo will provide information on the manual handling qualities of the Orion flight control system and interactions between the control inputs made by the astronauts and Orion's guidance, navigation, and control flight software routines. After ICPS performs the Apogee raise burn, which will put itself and Orion into a 24-hour long high Earth orbit, Orion will separate from the ICPS leaving the Orion stage adapter and the spacecraft adapter cone attached to the SLS second stage. NASA is starting to release more graphics about the ProxOps demo. This is one from March. Similar to the transposition and docking maneuver during Apollo missions, Orion will separate out to station keeping distance from the ICPS, OSA, SA cone stack and turn around to face it. Through Orion's windows, the two astronauts in the pilot seats should be looking at this docking target on the OSA diaphragm. After performing a set of tests of Orion's handling qualities under manual control by the crew, they will then fly an approach to ICPS using the centerline docking target as a reference point. Typically, there will be rendezvous aids on the chaser spacecraft like Orion that the crew is using, including a docking camera in Orion's top hatchway. This is the first time I recall seeing a picture with the target installed on the OSA. Another centerline target is installed on the ICPS on one of the X braces. This is a picture that ULA published last year after that was installed on ICPS 2. As the graphic depicts, after the first approach and handling tests in close proximity to the stage, the crew backs Orion away and then the stage will use its own attitude control system to maneuver to a solar normal attitude, which, as the graphic says, is better for the thermal control for the stage. We saw video from this solar normal attitude on Artemis 1 during the single Earth orbit Orion and ICPS made before the TLI burn. Flight control, ICPS is an attitude control and maneuvering to solar normal. Copy, good news. Of course, we saw this most famously, so to speak, with the core stage in the background as it coasted up to the 1800 kilometer apogee with Orion and ICPS before it re-entered. On Artemis II, after the stage completes its maneuvers and is in a solar normal attitude, then the Orion crew will make a second manual approach to this other centerline target before a final separation from the ICPS. The initial manual approach as a part of the transposition and docking phase will mimic what Orion will be doing on Block 1B missions beginning with Artemis 4, as shown in this animation. Block 1B will enable carrying a 10 metric ton class secondary payload with Orion. 
After the TLI burn by the exploration upper stage, Orion typically will separate, turn around, approach, and dock to the co-manifested payload. Using Artemis 4 as an example, like this animation, it will flip around and dock to the IHAB module of the gateway and extract it from EUS before leaving the immediate area. The Orion for Artemis 2 is still the critical path for the schedule, and NASA Public Affairs reported on a milestone this past week that the spacecraft completed electromagnetic interference and electromagnetic compatibility testing in the altitude chamber. As we see in these pictures that were released by NASA Public Affairs, it was moved from the altitude chamber back to the final assembly systems test cell, fast cell for short, in the industrial operations zone of the Neil Armstrong Operations and Checkout Building at Kennedy Space Center. There were also some new or previously unseen images of Artemis 3 flight hardware in the presentations. In this shot of the SLS launch vehicle stage adapter for Artemis 3, as the caption noted, the frangible joint assembly has been installed at the top of the adapter. That is the separation plane between the LVSA and the ICPS. There were also a couple of shots of the European service module for Artemis 3, which is completing standalone integration by prime contractor Airbus at its assembly integration and test facility in Bremen, Germany. In this shot, we can see one of the large hypergolic propellant storage tanks on the left in one partition of the ESM, and on the right, a pair of water tanks, two of the four total that the ESM carries. ESM-3 was previously forecast to arrive at KSC at the end of last year and then at the end of the first quarter, but Mr. Shatria noted in the Moon to Mars presentation that it is still going through final integrated testing in Bremen and is now predicted to be on dock at KSC in July. We also got a new view of a portion of the engine section of Core Stage 3 in one of the presentations, and thanks again to NASA Public Affairs, a higher res view of that was provided. This is taken from a platform, from a work platform at the top of the barrel with one of the two liquid oxygen feed line downcomer segments in the foreground. We can see the flanges for the engine section itself and also for this LOX feed line segment. The feed lines are supported by aft reaction structure beams, which are still not quite bare metal, but only with their primer coat applied. The feed line segment has already gotten some of the spray-on foam insulation thermal protection system applied, probably prior to attachment to the barrel. One of the things unknown is when this picture was taken. It's after the previous picture released, which was taken almost a year ago in June 2023. But if you look closely, you can see a little bit of the structure of one of the TVC platforms still out on the shop floor. In this case, the shop being the Space Systems Processing Facility at KSC. Again, it's not clear what effect the Artemis 3 delay in January and then the SLS workforce reductions that are starting now are having on production and delivery schedules. When I spoke with Boeing SLS production team leads last year, they were looking at installing the TVC platforms around mid-year, but that was before all of these changes at the beginning of 2024. The completion and delivery dates for this stage were already a long-term watch item. Hopefully there will be more details on production status later in the year. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please let me know. There are more videos providing coverage of the presentations to the NASA Advisory Council coming soon.